Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we would be discussing about UiPath integration services. And the best thing about this video is that it would also serve non-RPS software developers who want to understand that how UiPath platform can be leveraged for automating business processes by combining the UI and the AI API automation capabilities. So there are a lot of third party applications that are part of UiPath integration services. And with, within just few clicks, you'll be able to automate even those enterprise level applications. So without further ado, let's quickly get started with the video. So what is UiPath integration services? How we can use it? And why do we actually need to use it? So UiPath integration service is the component of the UiPath platform that actually makes the automation of third-party apps pretty much easier for us because there is a standard authorization and authentication step, which has now become very easy because of UiPath integration services. And there are a lot of apps available which are part of UiPath integration services like OneDrive, Google Drive, Twilio, Workday, Slack. So all these are easily available and you can easily, you know, authenticate yourself and then utilize all these enterprise level apps to be part of your automation. So there are pre-built APIs and by using that, the development of all these automation projects in Studio has become more simple and more consistent regardless of the third party app we are automating. So we need not to understand and to go and read all the API documentation to actually authenticate, how to authenticate and how to send APIs and how to actually use all those third party apps. So with, it, with UiPath integration service, you can easily authenticate yourself. And then there are dedicated set of activities provided with each of those enterprise level app. And we can directly go on utilizing those activities to actually use all those third party apps. And why do we need to use it? So each third party app connectors comes with a dedicated set of activities, as I already told. So instead of going through the entire API documentation on how to call that API, what to pass and what not to pass, we can simply drag and drop that set of activities to utilize the services that are offered by those third party apps. And that would of course allow the developers to combine the automation at the API level combined with the UI interaction that we usually do. So the integration service greatly expands the type of process that can be automated while providing developers with enhanced design flexibility. So this is why it is so useful and we can simply use it by enabling automation, by enabling integration service in our automation cloud. We'll see that how do we enable integration service in our automation cloud, which is our orchestrator to actually get started with UiPath integration services. Okay, so this is an enterprise onboarding process automation overview. So this is just to give you all a flavor of what all can be achieved very easily once we use UiPath integration service. So this particular enterprise onboarding involves SAP success factor, as you can see. It involves Salesforce, it involves ServiceNow, it involves Slack, and it involves Outlook. So Outlook and Excel, we are pretty much used to how we can use it, but there are three enterprise level application involved, SAP SuccessFactor, Salesforce, Slack and ServiceNow 4. So if we do not involve UiPath integration service, we'll have to go through the API documentation of all these four application and then actually see on how to authenticate and how to call other APIs to serve our need. But with UiPath integration service, it has become very easy. We can enable integration for all these four of the enterprise level applications, and it is then become it would then become very easy to use. So, what does this enterprise onboarding does? So, whenever a new employer is being added in this Excel, so this Excel actually gets downloaded from SAP Success Factor, and whenever there's a list of new employee in the OneDrive, and once this Excel is uploaded onto OneDrive, our program actually gets triggered. So if any action has to be performed for any of the employee, a ticket for the same, so some action happens in Salesforce and then accordingly a ticket is raised in service not required or otherwise the same also gets communicated through Slack channel as well as through mail. So this is an entire enterprise level onboarding process that can easily be automated once we use UiPath integration services. 
So now there are three main components of UiPath integration service, namely connectors, connections, and triggers. So what are connectors? So it actually allows us to create secure connection and association between the UiPath, which is the tool that we would be using for automation, and our third-party application. It could be Salesforce, it could be ServiceNow, it could be Slack, it could be Google Drive, it could be Twilio, et cetera. Connection allows us to establish tasks and exchanges between single user and external application. So now once we have established the connection, now we can you know, exchange the information, send what we have to do, call an API, get the user list and all of that. And that is possible once we establish the connection, once we've established a secure connection between the UiPath and between the third party application. Then we have triggers. So triggers are similar to the triggers we create in Orchestrator. So it provides a uniform mechanism for subscribing to events. So suppose we want to trigger whenever a file is uploaded to Google Drive, we want our connection or we want our process to start taking actions. And um, similarly, suppose whenever a ticket is created in ServiceNow, we want certain action or certain process to run. So for all that, we can actually create triggers so that it is very flexible when do we have to start our automation or processes in Orchestrator. So that is what triggered us. So now steps to enable integration service, we'll have to open our automation cloud account, go to admin page, open our tenant setting, and then we have to check the integration option. So let's go and see how do we enable integration services. So we'll go here we'll go to our UiPath integration services. So first of all, to enable what we'll have to do is, we'll have to go to, so this is our orchestrator, which is automation cloud. We'll go to the homepage, okay? And then we'll go to the admin section. So on, clicking on that more button, we'll land onto admin section. And over here, we'll check on show more action and tenant settings. Once we go on tenant setting, so as of now, because I already have all these things available, integration services, but otherwise I'll get an option here of integration services also, and I'll have to tick mark it. So now suppose if I have to enable data service, I'll click on it. So because I already have integration services enabled, it is not showing here, otherwise it would be showing here and I'll have to just check that mark and click on save and my integration service would then be available. So I'll click on more and I land onto this integration service. So this is what UiPath integration service looks like. And you can see a lot of connectors are available. Bamboo HR, Box, Cisco WebEx team, Dropbox, GoToWebinar, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Drive, Jira, OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive and SharePoint, Salesforce, SAP Cloud, ServiceNow, Slack, so a lot of them are available, even Trigger, which is as of now is in Twitter, which is as of now in preview, but it is available, Twilio, Zendesk. So we'll see how do we establish connection with one of these enterprise level application. And you can replicate the same to, you know, integrate and establish a connection with any of the other enterprise application you want to. As of now, I would be picking Twilio because of course service now, Salesforce, all of this is not available for my personal use. So I would be using Twilio. So Twilio actually is uses APIs to send OTP. So a lot many times when we you know do shopping or whenever we do anything, whenever we log into any application, an OTP sent to our phone so that we verify that, okay, we are a valid user. Similarly, we also receive calls for OTP for secure passwords so that we can pass through an application. So for that, Twilio is used. So Twilio allows software developers to programmatically make and receive phone calls, send and receive text message, and perform other communication function using its web service APIs. So that is what we would be doing here. So for that, you'll first need to have a Twilio account. So you can simply type twilio.com and you'll be able to sign up for it. So $15 is what you get for free to send message and to call. And after that, you'll have to, of course, upgrade your account. But $15 for you to learn all these things to in the integration sending of n number of calls and messages is enough. So it's kind of free. So as you can see, this is my Twilio account. 
and fourteen point zero five five dollars is as of now available with me for free. Once you do that, you'll get an option here on the home page only to get a number for yourself. Get a Twilio phone number. Using this phone number only, you can actually make calls and you can actually send messages. Okay. And once you scroll down, you'll be able to get your account SID or token and your Twilio phone number. Okay. So if I go to UiPath integration service and I select Twilio. Okay. So other thing to note here is these are my connectors. Once I establish my connection using one of these enterprise level app, the connection would be available here. So I have two connection as of now, Twilio and Google Drive. The other thing is if you create triggers, which means if anything happens on these two enterprise level app and you want to take some action, which means to execute some process, you'll create a trigger for that. So I have one trigger also. So it is very easy to enable to create another connection also. And if you want to test your existing connection, you can click on these three dots and click on check connection and it will check the connection and say, okay, connection is successful. For you to create another connection, that is also very easy. You can simply click on add connection, search for the level enterprise level app you want to establish connection with. So I'll search will you and select it. Once I select it, it would redirect me to a page wherein I have to enter my account SID, auth token, and phone number. So I'll select test because, of course, this is a testing app. And as I showed you, account SID and auth token and your phone number is easily available on your home screen. So once you do enter all these three information, click on connect, mm -hmm. your connection would be established with Twilio. So once you do that, you'll have Twilio here in the connections. So now I'll open UiPath Studio. So I have all the dedicated set of activities that I can make use with Twilio. So I'll type in Twilio. And for that, one thing to notice is you need to have uipath.twilio.integration.service.activities present here. All the apps that you see here would have its packaged name like this only ui path i mean the naming thing would be same so it would be ui path dot g suit dot activities google drive and microsoft office 365 are an exception with the naming convention otherwise all of them would follow this naming convention only which is ui path dot will you dot integration service dot activities so for Dropbox also, you'll have uipath.dropbox.integrationservice.activities. For Expensify, you'll have uipath.expensify.integrationservice.activities. So this is the naming convention that is being followed for all the third-party app, exception being Microsoft O365 and Google Drive. These are the two exceptions, which do not follow this naming convention. So you can, once you have installed this particular package, you can go to activities and simply search Twilio. So now let's see how to actually utilize all of these Twilio activities. First and foremost, we'll have to have Twilio scope and everything that we wanna do has to follow inside the Twilio scope. So the Twilio connection, either we can establish or create a new connection. We'll have to pass in the auth ID and everything as we did pass it or Otherwise, our robot connection will always use our default connection, which is the connection we created in integration services. So we can have all available local phone numbers, all available mobile phone numbers, and available toll-free phone numbers. So if we go on searching all available toll-free phone numbers, we have to pass in a country code. So you can check for which country, what is the country code in the documentation of Twilio. So if I want to go with US, so I put in the country code as US and I'll type in phone number. And if I want to know that, okay, how many available toll free phone numbers are there in US. So I can have phone number to count or to string that would actually give me the count of it. Or if I want to get, uh, say the first phone number that is present, so I can simply do that as phone number and I'll pass in the index, which is zero dot two string. So let's just run it and see. I'm gonna comment this as of now and we'll give this thing a run to see 
how many available toll free numbers are present in us and what is the first toll free number there in that particular list that it has extracted so you can see in the output pane there are 30 toll free number present and this actually did not print in anything probably because of some own number it then if we do zero what does it give okay dot friendly name is also available then it should also have a property okay so the property is phone number now this would actually give us the phone number present the phone number is the property if we want to fetch out phone number of that first index so we go here we'll open the output pane to see so there are 30 toll free numbers available and now it would also print in the first toll free number which is there so you can see plus one eight three three eight two something something now i had to make a phone call so that is also available so i'll search in twilio so if i have to send a message so suppose i have to send a message so i'll put in the number to the number i want to send in the message and i'll put in the from like from which phone number do i want to send in the message so for that you can get your twilio phone number you have to provide your twilio phone number from here and because you're on a trial account you can only send messages and make calls to verified phone numbers so you can go from go to verified phone numbers and whitelist all those phone numbers to which you want to send the message as of now i'm not going to open this one because that is my number in it so to all the phone numbers you want to send messages to you'll have to add it to this particular list verified phone numbers and then you can put in the body like you can put in this is the otp and uh, or anything you can put in that this is the OTP, provide this OTP or something. And then you can run this and this would send a message. Then you'll also have an option to actually make a call. Okay. So you can send in the to and from thing. And then you have to send the trimmel content of a call. And how do you actually send the trimmel content of the call? I'll show you here. How do you send in the trimmel content of a call? So if you want to make a call, this is how you send the trimmel content of the call. So you'll have to send it as a string. So that is why it's surrounded by double quotes. Then inside the response tag, you have a say tag. And inside the say tag, you will gonna send this message must be nested in a response element in order for you to say it to your caller. Okay. And I'm going to run this and uh, I would receive the call on my phone and you'll be able to hear that I've got the call. So I'll comment this out and we'll run the one that is here. And uh, once I receive the call, I'm going to put it, put my phone on speaker so that you guys can hear the call that I've received. So you'll always have to send the trimmer response the way I showed you. And you have to pass it as a string, which means your trimmer response should be surrounded by double quotes. Okay, so I have received the call. You have a trial account. You can remove this message at any time by upgrading to a full account. Press any key to execute your code. So it says press any key to execute. So I'm going to press a key. This message must be nested in a response element in order for Twilio to say it to your caller. Okay, so that's the end. It has said what was written inside the response tag and I've received a message because there was also a message that I was sending and I received a call because I was sending a call. So that is how you can integrate Twilio, make connection out of it and send messages, OTPs or make calls with sense verification code. So that's it as part of this video. In the next video, we would be seeing that how can we actually make a trigger? So anytime we upload a file to OneDrive or Google Drive, a process actually gets triggered and it will perform all the steps that it's supposed to perform, making use of UiPath integration services and the connection that we have created. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.